Hello there, and welcome to another episode of the Gray Area Delinquents. It is. Humans are such easy prey. This isn't funny anymore! Today, I am joined by two of my Freaknet Studios, Freaknet Studio Bros, Cartoon Joe and Travis T. I like how my name's second. Oh yeah. I was alpha, I was being there. I was being alpha alphabetical. Are we doing are we doing bad Chicago accents? Is that the thing we're after? That, today? I thought you were doing Canadian. Bad Chicago accents. <laughs> bad Chicago accents. I thought you were going Canadian. No, I'm going it's more Minnesota. <laughs> we live off that uh, Pulaski and Halstead out there. What you gotta do is go get yourself a Polish sausage. <laughs> get the sauerkraut on it. It's I'm, pretty good at Portillo's. I'm not doing that. You're not <laughs> <laughs> Bears, 163 Giants zip. <laughs> oh, so you're giving the Giants credit there. Uh, all right, well, I'm here with uh, two of the Freak Nuts Studio Bros. Travis, how you been? I've been good, man. I've been good. I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you came out here. I'm excited for everything we got going on today. This is exciting. Guess what we're doing today, guys? Delinquents, listen. We're doing the Hot Sauce Challenge I've been talking about forever. So I will put a link on... The gray area page, or you could check it out on a Freaknet Studio page on uh, Facebook. But uh, you'll, if you love me, like I love you, because you love me, I will put out the, uh, I will put out the links on all of my social medias, so you will find the video of us trying Mexico versus United States hot sauces. Travis, you you are on the side of the. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, the American hot sauce, including your uh, tapatio. The tyrants? It's, from California. <laughs> it's not, okay, all right, it's still a Hispanic hot sauce base. I don't care. <laughs> it's still California, man. <laughs> I mean, American barbecue is still done in Japan, right? It's, but it's American. Strong point. Corona is bottled in Chicago. And look what Corona's done to people. <laughs> I mean, look, Polish sausage. Again, not one good thing coming from Chicago. Um, crime and coronavirus. <laughs> Corruption. Corruption. Oh yeah, that's why. Cliff note. That's why they call it the Windy City. It's not yeah. because of it's not because of wind, which is is it up is, there. It is windy. It is, but uh, it's all the hot air that politicians blow out of their ass right. because we're corrupt. How are you doing, Cartoon Joe? Good. I'm well. I'm quite. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Happy to be here. It's exciting. How's your How's your cousin Freak Night? Freak Freak Joe. Oh, he's all right. He's he's hibernating. How's your, <laughs> how's your cousin Freaknet? Is that, Freaknet uh, Joe. That might be a thing. Is, is Freak Joe your brother? Your cousin? I don't think he ever really established. I'm that. I'm a uh, I'm Jekyll like a I'm like a dualistic god, yeah. and I'm I'm like I'm like Chernabog and Bielabog from uh, from American Gods. Oh, I love it. I just always assume that you fall into a well for a month and he just kind of takes over. Yeah, yeah. Like that's basically Jack, right. Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's yeah, a weird yeah. thing too because like every time we do this freaky show, he never wants to do video. He just he wants to do audio only. Yeah. Audio. You know? So it's a weird thing. So really, we don't even it's know what Freak Joe. I don't. Looks I don't like. even think he'd show up on film. I assume that Freak Joe looks like Cartoon Joe but with vampire fangs, like the fake plastic mm. ones you get out of like vending right. machines. Yeah, yeah, a yeah, giant. They don't like, fit right. Yeah. <laughs> Darth Sidious hood. Yeah. With the glowing Darth eyes. Sidious hoodie. Zips. <laughs> <laughs> He's progressive. He's progressive. Shirt made out of duct tape for some Shirt reason. Made out of duct tape. <laughs> well, this is done. I mean, oh. freaky tales. Yeah. Oh yeah. All three of us are going to. I, I'd like to be involved in it. I think I could write. <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm thinking about writing a story. I, I was motivated mm-hmm. by Freak Joe talking about you know submitted. Stories for yeah. people to, you know, so he could read during the month of We're still oh, yeah. October. Maybe. Never got a lot of submissions. We didn't get any submissions this year, I don't think. No, we, I think, I think, I because we've done for three years out of the four years we've been doing this. And, um, we, uh, I think we got once, uh, one request before. That's about it. Yep. Well, I, I have gotten one submission from a guy, but he didn't, he didn't submit again this year. Did he so. submit his own story? Or did he just mm-hmm. request one? Oh, okay. Yeah, he submitted his own. Yeah. But no, we, uh, no, we're definitely going to, uh, we're definitely gonna make a this freaky, or freaky tales book. Yeah, freaky tales book. We just gotta figure out how many stories because I really wanna. I don't want to say rip off, but 
Um, I want to do how they, uh, what the hell is those books? Scary, scary stories, stories to tell, to tell in the, the dark. dark. Yeah. 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 So I want to do something like that, but mm-hmm. there's like 25, 30 fucking stories so in those books. They yeah. did a movie where they put like I need five to see of them. Still. It's not bad. Yeah. yeah. It's not bad. They put like five of the stories in the book. It's like an indie from the version the of like Goosebumps movie. I used to love Goosebumps. R.L. Stein. I used to too until Jack Black, uh, played a black. Jack, Jack black. black. Yeah. Jack Kung black Fu Panda. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the school of rock guy. Yeah, <laughs> he's awesome. Tenacious D. Tenacious D. Oh, amazing. But yeah, no, Freaky Freaky Tales is a thing. We do got to start working on that though. Yeah, we do. Because it is uh, about eight months till yeah. uh, this freaky show comes back, and we haven't started. And these are all going to be originals. That's oh, the yeah. plan. That's yeah, the plan. Yeah, they, yeah. And that's another hard thing when it comes to creating like uh, ghost stories or spooky stories and stuff like that. It's hard to find an original story. Now you get to you gotta pull concepts and stuff out and yeah. try to interpret it your own way. Now I do have an idea for at least one original story that I do want to play off of uh, one of our trips through the country. Oh, the yeah. Viaduct. Oh yeah. So I do have an idea for a story about that that I yeah. think would uh would really work. But I mean every go I mean, every story we're gonna do it's gonna have something about ghosts or, you know, monsters and stuff like that. Where you could easily create it, and then somebody's gonna pull out like, "Well, that was already done." It's kind of like that South Park episode where Simpsons did it. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 So like, no matter what you're gonna do, you always got that one person like, "Well, you just kind of ripped off blah 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 blah." I'm like, I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. Right. Think about it as inspiration. Like it's a, it's it's you've read this, it inspires mm-hmm. you. Like the the freaky tale that I have in mind has nothing to do with like ghosts and goblins and scary shit. It's more like. The Edgar Allan Poe inside your own head yeah. terror. I have that kind of a That's story what I in like. my head. I like that kind of story. Yeah. I would love to like write I'm, like Edgar Allan Poe does. Yeah. I'm like much more poetic afraid. Kind. You'd have to be borderline fucking psychotic. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. I, what didn't he, he was on drugs, wasn't he? Oh, I don't remember. I feel like everybody was on drugs. Did he marry his 12 year old cousin? <laughs> yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. He, he drank, he actually, you know, when they found him in the street, when he died, uh, he was pretty drunk. So he, he was probably a drinker, at least. That wouldn't surprise right. me. Fucking nowadays, and if I got on polls in 2020, he'd be a fucking... Uh, vape. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. He'd, he'd be a fucking criminal. <laughs> vape. Criminal, child <laughs> rapist, fucking like a mark on society. But back then, hero. Yeah. He'd sit at, he'd sit at, the, he'd sit at the goth table. Right. right. He'd be playing Roger the Gathering at lunch. <laughs> right, hanging out there with the benches. He's bleeding from the fucking head. Oh, God. That'd be hilarious. Because it's art. Right? Right. Yeah. Well, who was the guy that didn't get famous until after he was dead? He was like a star. Vincent Van Gogh. Oh, yeah. 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 But that's a lot of people. Even the Three Stooges, no one cared about that until they died. Really? Oh, my God. Yeah. If I was, I think I would have watched the shit out of them. I, I mean, he, they were up against, they were up against not only Chaplin, who was fucking huge, mm-hmm. but they were also up against uh, Marx. Yeah, Lauren Hardy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Abbott and Costello. I mean, Lauren Hardy. Did you guys watch? Did you watch that movie? I love. Mm. No, I never seen the movie. I, I want to see that one with. Um, I I thought Three Stooges and I fucking hated it. And oh it no, that was made. Of, that was made to be a comedy. The Laurel and Hardy one is supposed to be like a behind the scenes. It's about their life. Yeah, yeah. like drama and they're mm-hmm. trying to compete with the up and comers of, like the new wave of comedy and yeah. stuff. I mean, Chaplin converted pretty well from silent films to sound. And he didn't really talk. The one time he talked, he portrayed Hitler, and then right. he, and then he got like deported out of the country. He wasn't allowed to come back until like nineteen really seventy something. I didn't know that. To I where think. he got like a lifetime achievement award from the Oscars. I think Ch- huh. wasn't Chapman Austrian. It might have been Austria. I, I know he. I know he got kicked out for making fun of like Hitler and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I mean, who would do that? The monsters. <laughs> how dare <laughs> you? How dare you make fun of Hitler? <laughs> He was a. I mean, it was too soon then. It was too soon then. Had Hitler even? When was that movie made? The Great Dictator. Oh, I'm gonna say, twenty nine. That's so. It was right before he was really in power because that was thirty two. Was the election? Yeah. Interesting. That was. Uh, what kind of government was uh, Nazi Germany? Just curious. Uh, it was a socialist dictatorship. They train well. It wasn't really socialist. They just called themselves that. Oh, but it was a it was a republic before. That was Nazi. It was the Weimar Republic, and then it became was it Nazi. It was, yes, uh, but that's not like the actual. Oh, it was part. It was part. It was a parliamentary system. Mm. Right. Yeah. Wow, Nazis. Could you imagine? Fuck. I you know, ever, right? you ever see? You ever see the um, the man in the high castle? I haven't. I well, I've seen the first season. I heard it's it was good. so good. Yeah. It's like a what if 
Like, what mm-hmm. if Germany got the atom bomb before America got it? Uh, yeah, Phil K. Dick. Wow. Really interesting writer. Thank God Einstein was Jewish, right? Well, him and Oppenheimer, pretty much, the Manhattan Project is the atom bomb. Yeah. And after he finished doing it with Oppenheimer, he's been quoted as saying, Einstein has been quoted as saying, what have I done? Like, mm-hmm. what, like Yeah, Oppenheimer is his famous quote. Uh, Behold, I become death, destroyer of worlds. Yeah, it's, it's insane. And to this day, I mean, countries are looking to have that kind of power yeah. from the 40s, and they can't figure it out. Mm-hmm. I read something on uh, Facebook. Uh, there was a meme talking about Tesla and like all the great things he did. And one of the things that was listed was death ray. Yeah, allegedly. Like he, cre- he created a death ray that was so powerful he destroyed it so no one could fucking possess it. I don't know if that's true or it's just like a really popular myth because he was such a weird dude. Right. He might have been a Star Wars fan. Yeah. The well, Death Star. He also he, created Star Wars. He, <laughs> when, when he lay dying in the convalescent home, he was in love with a pigeon. Tesla? Yeah. Oh, see, you gotta be crazy to be a genius, apparently. It's okay, his cars are battery operated, so it's... <laughs> <laughs> there There was a, uh, in like the 1950s, there were Toma, Toya, Toho, something, there was a Japanese... Toyota? No, it was, it was, a, it was a Japanese car. Tokyo? They completely went under. Tony Romo? Because of um, the industrial complex. They had an electric oh, Pontiac. <laughs> they had an electric car that would go 40 miles on a single charge which was pretty fucking huge for like the 40s 50s and never made it and never yeah. made it because the, the whole well, I gas mean, was so cheap yeah well yeah. yeah fossil fuels and everything right America's independent now on that which is good I think that's a good thing I mean there's certain things like fracking is a relatively new idea but I don't know how much it compromises like tectonic plates of people living under wherever. So you got like yeah, right. these, you got like these sunken houses and these sinkholes and just randomly swallowing up houses in Florida. It's terrifying. Well, and you get you get like uh, you know where fracking is really big in like Tulsa, Oklahoma. There's been uh, more earthquakes in the last like decade than there's been in like a hundred years. There's a huge fault line that where we live, like in Illinois, a huge one that hasn't been moving for a while. And there's like a super volcano and. Yellowstone, when that shit pops off, we are fucked. Yeah, like, we'll, be, we'll be all right. Well, I mean... I What's mean, the worst that can happen? Is it, no, like, I mean, now, would that, be, would, that be, would that be climate change? Or would that be just natural occurrences throughout, like, how the world works? Plates, plates shift, stuff like that. Because everyone's, like, talking about how, you know, climate change is man-made and the doomsday clock and how... America needs to do better, but in reality, no one has matched America in the past eight years as, as far as carbon emissions. We have substantially gone down. And in my opinion, humble opinion, I think that even though we progress towards better climate change and doing things and getting out of stupid accords that make no sense... China isn't going to match it. India is not going to match it. And the industrial um, era that is happening in Africa will not match it. And it's one globe. So even if we cut down <laughs> Germany, France, Western civilizations cut down on whatever emission, and they match the CO2 emissions of America, those other countries will not do that. They will, they will not join an accord or environmental plan. And then even if they did, let's say everybody did, there was one burp from a volcano like four months ago, Mount Etna, and it just burped into the atmosphere. And that put more CO2 than mankind has ever done. Like, ever. So, and that's that's natural. That would be a natural occurrence. Right, that'd be a natural one, yeah. But, I mean, I think when it comes to trees, I think we need as many trees to filter out all the bullshit as much as possible. I don't think we should be dumping into waterways for one thing, and I think we could probably progress as a nation for our emissions to better help climate change, national parks, riverways, clean water, because, I mean, Flint is still fucked. Right. Uh, Waterways are still fucked. There's pollution all over the place. If we take care of America, that's great. Yeah, but, well, and we're we're such a big. I mean, we're we're we take up the majority of this continent too. You know, uh, in terms of population, taking it up because I think I think Canada's technically bigger, but nobody lives 
above a certain point. The population of Canada is 37 million people. The population of America is 140. Right. Yeah, we got three times as many people. You know how he knows that? He mentioned it on his show last week. Oh, interesting. Yes. Yeah. He did. I but yeah, I, I agree. I, I think yeah, I, I think we need. You know, we've got more native plants that we could grow instead of the the shitty looking yards that we have. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got um, uh, we're 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 bringing back the the bison, which I think is great because if you look at the way that bison do uh, ranching versus the way cows do ranching, mm-hmm. yes, uh, cows put out a lot more methane emissions than bison do. Uh, cows don't trample the ground in a way that's good for the environment the way bison do. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we could do that I, I think it'd be great to see America be not just uh, uh, not just good on climate, but I think we could be a, a real climate leader um, and, and a great exemplar. Yeah, we could, yeah, we could yeah. definitely influence and a lot. I think we've actually started to take those steps in the right direction, but yeah. this globe rotates. And what's happening in India, what's happening in China... We'll end up in our atmosphere as we oh, just sure. slowly yeah. rotate around. I just It's terrifying. Yeah, yeah. Like coronavirus. Oh, my God. That's fucking... That's terrifying. That's I, don't still, even, I, don't even, I don't even know... I don't even know where that is now, but I talked about that on my um, on my podcast like a couple weeks ago, and it terrified me. I like uh, I don't know where it is now. Let's see what the, the death toll is now in coronavirus. It's like... I like how you mentioned your podcast. Like 15, we're not on your podcast right? right now. No, you. Uh, yes. <laughs> is it more than that? welcome? Is it more than fifteen or twenty thousand? Is, uh, is it a death toll or is it number of people infected? The, the it's, death it's, toll's it's the death toll. No. What the death toll is up? I think it's in the thousands now. For just for China alone. I thought it was just a couple in, hundred people. Yeah, two hours ago, infection toll in China reaches two. 1,345 as South Korea reports a surge in cases and Iran confirms its fifth death from the virus. The spread of the new coronavirus has intensified around the world with South Korea cases more than doubling to reach 433, the highest number confirmed by South Korea so far. And this thing is just popping off. It's terrifying. People were like um, quarantined on cruise ships. The cruise ships is like, can we dock here? Can we let the people out? They're like, Fuck you. No. <laughs> we don't know what's going on there. But, uh, I mean, we're in a safe place, hopefully, even well, though we got one in Illinois, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we did get one in Illinois, and it was one of the people who, who we pulled off the cruise ship that was supposed to be quarantined. Oh, my God. Didn't her husband also get infected? I think so. Yeah, they were to, they were together. I don't know where this originated. Wuhan, China is where it originated. Right. Apparently, Wuhan. people like drinking fucking bat soup or some shit. There yeah. was a... I think it was a pangolin, wasn't it? A what? A pangolin? Like the the thing, it's like an armadillo, but longer. All oh, right, yes, yes. Much cuter. <laughs> I love penguins. They always look like they're waiting to talk. Oh my god, they're so cute. Let's eat it. <laughs> yeah, it's like they're. Well, mother- you know, it's it's uh, allegedly you powder it and it makes your dick hard. So <laughs> oh no, I'm just kidding. That just that's all of Chinese medicine, as far as I know. <laughs> isn't, isn't, that how, uh, isn't that how AIDS happened? Somebody ate a monkey. Yep. Or fucked a monkey. Or fucked a monkey. Or fucked a monkey. Yeah. Ooh. Hard to say. R.I.P. Freddie Mercury. Oh, yes. He was the best. <laughs> so good. You know, speaking of your doomsday clock, uh, when we were doing um, That Freaking Happened, our completely original idea on our podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one of the things that happened this week is there was a prediction for the end of the world. Uh, oh, really? This week, I think, back in like the 50s or something like that. This week? Yeah. Oh, so this might be it for us, delinquents. No, this week back back in the fifties. Oh, not this week. The way no. they thought it was going to end back in the fifties. Yeah. They, oh, okay. Wait, they thought it was. Yeah. We haven't had a world ending <sighs> in quite some time. I think what twenty twenty twelve twenty twelve. That was, was a big one. The Mayan calendar one. Yeah, that yeah. was eight years ago. Holy yeah. shit! Yeah. Oh God, I was thirty one. Now I'm thirty nine. It's yeah, ridiculous. Just had a birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, you did. It's How insane. Was that? That's right. It was right. I don't think 39 is going to be as big as, you know, 40. 40 is like a big one. But I actually think my 69th birthday is going to be bigger than my 70th. Guess what the activity is going to be? <laughs> All right, everybody, come in. Take your pants off. We're going we're to we're we're human centipede this motherfucker right now. It's like, oh, God. Did you guys watch? Uh, you guys enjoyed the Oscars? I didn't watch them. I, don't, um, I, I did a little bit for the most part. I don't. I don't like the non-hosting concept of it. Mm. I just. I. I think. Uh, I think the Oscars are dumb. I do too. I just. I just have no interest. Yeah, in we, it. we talked about the show. Yeah. I think it's more. It should be more of a popular vote concept. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think. Fun it, fact, not to yeah, real, go quick, ahead. real quick, go ahead. Mr. Feeney, the actor who played Mr. Feeney, was the president of the Screen Actors Guild back in the early two thousands. Oh, fun that's fact. fun. Really? Everything, everything revolves around Boy Meets World. Yeah, everything in the world. It really, yeah, weirdly, it does for you today. I know, Small I, world. I yeah. love it. But I just, I just feel like you know, if if you look at the way the awards are chosen and and things, it's it's whoever gives the most money to the judges, and I just hate that. Oh my god, you think they're bought? Oh, I completely think they're bought. Like I, I hate looking at Rotten Tomatoes and seeing that you know these professional you know movie critics give it like a twenty, and then you look at like the thousands of actual people that watch the movie is like eighty five percent. Yeah. And it's like, why does why do the critics trump? The actual people that watch right. the movie. Yeah. They get right. to... Real quick, too. Uh, go, kind of go back to our world ending to. thing. Last one was June 9th of 2019. Oh, fun. Uh, Ronald Weenland, who previously predicted the end of the world in 2011, 12, and 13, predicted <sighs> in 2018 that Jesus would return on June 9th, 2019. Prior to that date occurring, he began to express some doubts regarding his own predictions. Yeah, probably. Well, you always got to soften the ground. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not a good grifter. Yeah. Who's but, to say he's not here? Right? The next yeah, one, maybe he was born. The next know. one's 2020. So, yeah, oh. what's going on here? You're, you're a preacher. Is that I what? am. Okay, I, I, not a pastor? I, I am a pastor. I'm both. I don't know how... What's the, what's the line there for that? I don't know that there really but is one. But you're a reverend. I'm not... I'm actually, I'm actually not a reverend. Mm. Yeah, I am oh, a priest. I won't go with preacher. A priest you got to be black to be a reverend. No. No. It was a joke. It was a It was a joke. Jesse Jackson, Al so Sharpton. This, so this is the end of Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. Okay. Right, it was letter. fun delinquents. It was fun. I'm going to be kicked off. Uh, so. a letter from yeah. me. I, I would say arguably, so if I were just a preacher, it would mean that like people would bring me in to just to deliver the sermon. I would say because I'm a pastor, I'm also responsible for you know visiting the people in my congregation who are sick, for the, the general. I'm basically like the CEO of the church. Oh, I got you. In a lot of ways, you know. Do you watch Preacher by any chance? I don't, but I hear it's really good. It's so good. <laughs> you should be Pope. I would love that. would be fun. Don't you, you have to be Catholic, Catholic to be Pope? Yeah, you do. You can be Catholic. Actually, that's the part that would not be fun. I don't like you could so pull off Catholic. I used to. I, I'm, a very good, I'm very good at Catholicism. I was yes, Catholic. You could pull off Catholic without a doubt. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Didn't for you sure. say you wanted to observe, like, Lent? Isn't that more Catholic? Isn't that more? It Catholic? usually is more Catholic than Protestant, but I, I still think it's a nice. Yeah, you got to explain that because I think he asked you a question. I'm not sure if you answered it. I so answered it. What would you say about podcasting through Lent? I said I'd podcast. Oh, okay. I just I'm not going to post because I'm not going to be on Facebook. I'm going to deactivate my Facebook for 40 days. Will you listen? To Probably not podcasts. Oh, oh okay. yeah, no, I'll listen to podcasts. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, just not. I never listen to our podcast. <laughs> How are you going to promote the, uh, the Freak Nest Studios? I won't. I'm, I'm oh, unfortunately, I can't. Sorry. You know, the best thing about this whole Catholic Lent thing is potchkes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot that. So They're like good. Polish donuts. Yeah. Uh, they're so good. They're delicious. I'm going to leave you guys for a minute because I'm going to go check wings. Oh, he's got to check the wings for the hot wings. sauce. Yeah, but Lent, so Lent, Lent is a, uh, basically a 40-day uh, season to prepare oneself for Easter. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I've always been confused about the uh, the calendar of Christianity. Yeah. Okay. So was he actually born on Christmas? No. It was. Nope. Just, okay. So th- that was just to. Uh, it was. It lined up with uh, the the um, pagan pagan celebration that was already happening. I think it's called Sol Invictus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how does? Okay. So I understand. Uh, Christianity. So when when it was his actual birth? Do we know, do we know? Uh, I don't think we have an exact date, but most people put it in um, uh, early to mid March. Ah, most most biblical scholars, um, based on the like when when the Romans would have their censuses, and and when they arrived, uh, the way that you read the story. Mm. Yeah, I'm I'm Jewish by the way, so I, I'm just I'm just curious. Like so. Is it a coincidence that Passover and Easter kind of coincide a little bit? Uh, it's not a coincidence. Um, the the actual the if you read if you read the Christian scriptures, um, the the Jews were actually celebrating Passover at the same time that Jesus was. Uh, uh, the the Last Supper was a Passover seder. That's really what I'm trying to get. Yes, at. that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That is that's right. That was really cool. Um, that's really freaking neat. So you guys. Believe that he came back from the dead. From the dead. Yeah. How did he move that giant stone? Did he move the stone, or did he walk? I don't know. It's unclear. It? It's unclear. I mean, you know, the son of 
Yeah, Son the Son of uh, God himself should be able to move. Yeah, the depending on depending on what which of the Gospels you read, some of them say there was an earthquake and that's what moved the stone. Was, um, was the stone back in place when they when they went there? That's unclear. Oh. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so because so, the the the. Uh, the guards ran away, is what it says, and so I assume that nobody, the stone would have already been moved when the when his disciples showed up to look at it. That's so cool. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, there's no. It's weird. It's fucking weird. I'm oh not gonna, yeah, I'm not going to pretend it's not. Like people get on, people get on my case. People get on my case because I I talk about it from the Judaism perspective as well yeah. as like Christian perspective in regards to the Old Testament and the New Testament and how it was like I consider it like the first comic book even though they're but it's it's That's a good way to put it i mean the, the, the fucking superheroes there's villains there's bad guys there's you know instigators there's you know but it's traveled on for over two thousand years for christianity and over uh about six i think for you all yeah yeah I, almost se- seven something maybe 7500 something like that and um it's just amazing that something that doesn't have a lot of physical evidence, if not any, can build throughout thousands of years based on faith. So I think faith as a variable makes it relevant to be uh, valid as in like it actually is a real thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. I also think it's important, you know, to, to basically look at it and go, okay, this this book, this story, had a lot of meaning for the people who came before me. What was meaningful about it to them? How did it give them the strength to get through the, the trials and tribulations that they went through? You know, and and so that's that's how it can help me today uh, do the same. You know, and so I, I think that's that's one of the things. To me, this this could get me in trouble with some people who are a little bit more fundamentalist. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me as much whether or not something actually happened, as it does that it gave somebody meaning for their life. You know? Oh, yeah, like motivated them to be a better person. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Inspiration, so to speak. Right. That's cool. Yeah. Do you believe in, uh, you're a religious man, do you believe in, like, aliens and stuff? I uh, I think it'd be weird in a universe as large as ours for there not to be other other planets that evolved life. That's, I, I, I agree. Yeah. Well, I, I'm just not that, I'm not so anthropocentric that I think humans are the only ones. Yeah, I know. <laughs> There's no one else. We're so because we're, we're so yeah. conceited. We're like right? we're the best. There's nobody else out there. Yeah. Apparently. Simply the best. <laughs> Better than all the rest. Um, Demonetized. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get permission to use that song. <laughs> Actually, I think if you sing the song, you're fine as long as you don't. No, you can't have sing the, the lyrics to it either. You can't. No, oh, really. It has to be less than 30 seconds. It's a YouTube 15. thing. That's one of the YouTube things. Oh, oh YouTube. Okay. It's so fucking weird how YouTube does shit. And that's one of the problems, and I don't want to change subjects. No, it's fine. about Jesus. But YouTube changed, I want to say it was like beginning of 2019 or the end of 2018, or whatever, they changed all their policies on what you can and can't do. Really? Like, they're like, even if you did um, covers and stuff, you can't use the, the, the music. Huh. It's so fucking weird, or else you get demonetized. It's right, so unless weird. you pay for it. Demonetized means kicked off with it. No, it means you don't get paid for the show. Oh, oh. No, no, so if you have sponsors and advertisers, stuff like that. Yeah, you can't you get know, that sweet, sweet Bloomberg money. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> uh, like I don't... It's everywhere. Oh, God. Like, I think you might Sounds know, like but uh, Crowder. Stephen Crowder? Stephen Crowder. Oh, um, Con- I just know his name. <laughs> conservative uh, talk show. He has his own talk show host and everything. Uh-huh. Well, he's completely 100% demonetized on YouTube. And I guess, because of like one episode that he did once upon a time, or? no? Be, well, because of all the shit he does, it's he he is very he's very conservative and he's very factual. He's almost like a Fox News, uh, but he does it in more of a um, I'm gonna know. say redneck hillbilly way. How does YouTube demonetize somebody? They're not getting paid for the episode. The, the episode's still well, there. So I think what happens is uh, the advertisers pay YouTube, and then YouTube, YouTube distributes paid, yeah. the ad oh. revenue. Oh, yeah. Based on like, <coughs> views and clicks and, and engagement. Yeah. So there, there's this whole big thing with him trying to figure out like exactly why, because there's like no justification reason for him not being like monetized and all that stuff. But, right. Um, but no, it, it, when that happened, it's like. It's very similar to what Crowder does. Like, there's a when you watch Crowder and you f- figure out what YouTube's doing, it makes sense. Right. But other people become demonetized just because there's like 30 seconds 
right. or twelve seconds, fifteen seconds of like a a, ver, uh, like a lyric or something that they sing. Ah, uh, it's really goofy how they do stuff. That's why, like, when I started doing the uh, YouTube videos uh, for JFW, like the whole thing is like, well, we can't swear, we can't cuss, and like, well, you can. Right. You just can't use derogatory terms and stuff like that. I'd be fucked. That, yeah, you can't use things that people get offended by in a certain way. Right. So right. anything racial or uh, homophobic and stuff like that, oh, you, got just, you. you just can't use. I mean, you can, but you'll get demonetized. Yeah. 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 Um, I care more about the message than I do about that kind yeah. of shit anyway. But you can swear and stuff like that. Okay. And, and like... And, yeah, well, I, I've seen, I like, uh, I, I watch a lot of college humor videos, mm-hmm. and like, not just college humor. Who am I thinking of? Fail Army. No. Smosh. Smosh. Smosh is who I'm thinking of. I love the uh, the Try Not to Laugh challenges. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times they'll they'll use a song, and they'll actually, like, for that segment, it'll say demonetize, and they'll put a frame on it, and they'll tune out the music and stuff. Oh, so that my they don't, God. That way they don't get demonetized for that. Hey, YouTube. <laughs> Fuck you. Well, that's the thing, too. It's big people like that with demonetization because they, that's how they make their money. Right. Like, Good Mythical Morning, uh, Rhett and Link and all that stuff, like, they have millions. I mean, they bought Smosh. When, uh, the, oh, the fi- I didn't know that. Yeah, that well, makes sense. Yeah, because like, Smosh used to be owned by the Defy Media, and Defy yeah. Media went out of business. So GMM, or Mythical Entertainment, right. bought Smosh. And they could do yeah. that because... There's they, a huge they, realignment in the industry happening right now. Yeah. Like, over the last year or so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they just... They, it's, it's one of those things where you can make so much money off of your videos. And I think all you have to do is you have to have, like, a, in order to start making money, you have to have a 1,000 viewers or a 1,000 subscribers, and your show has an average 1,000 viewers. Huh. Obviously, J.P. is nowhere near that. YouTube. On YouTube. On just YouTube. It's just YouTube. <clears throat> YouTube doesn't care what iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or Podbean subscribers are. Right. Because they want you on YouTube watching YouTube right. shows. Because they're selfish bastards. Yeah. They want to make yeah. some money. Yeah. yeah. So, They're like, why would you make money if we can't get a little piece of that? Exactly. Because you're using our yeah. platform. Yeah. Because like, in YouTube's mind, and it's going to be like with any business. Like, why would I give you money for subscribers on Podbean? Right. That's how they look at it. Like, we will pay you when you bring content right. people you're, to you're, YouTube. You're right. You're, yeah. You, you got to get people to watch ads on our platform. Yeah. What is our plan yeah. when we start doing videos, though? Are we doing, we're going straight to YouTube? Our videos are going to be on YouTube, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Our videos are going to YouTube. Now there are going to be things like I, I think I shared with you and you saw it, um, the um, the haunted thing. I can't remember what the hell it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. like the the haunted Illinois trip. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, I want to yeah, do yeah. something like that. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. will be it'll be more vlog for YouTube, but I want to do a lot of Facebook Live for that. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Because we were talking about that originally when we were doing this uh, freaky show this past year. Yeah. Where we we're going to go to a haunted house and do like Facebook Live and stuff like that. We just never got around to doing yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like, well, haunted like, houses are expensive. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'd rather go to like the legit haunted like asylums where you're probably not going to see anything, but you just feel the yeah. aura and the eeriness of shit. Right. Like going to an actual haunted house where pe- there's paid actors and there's there to scare you. That's cool with like kids right. and like just going through it. But when you actually go to like forests or abandoned buildings or asylums or houses or like Cuba Road is a huge one in Illinois. Right. That would be... I just, uh, you know, I can look at the interest on my student loans for free. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, I mean... Is that why you're a Bernie supporter? Because you want that gone? Oh, it's not the only reason. (laughs) (laughs) I am in favor of it, though. (laughs) That's not a horrible idea. But I definitely want to do something like that for this freaky show and we can include Freaknet Studio as a part of that. Um, and that's a lot of things too. Is like I want to pull the stuff that we do individually as podcasts together into the videos and stuff that so we can work together to help build each other up. And that's like when we we're talking about uh, I'm gonna fucking say it wrong. Uh, B dope. Oh, cares not B dope podcast. Yeah. yeah. Like we we're talking about him potentially joining Freaknet Studios. That was an idea. And yeah. Like I and I have no problem with that because like I said, like the more you group together, the more you could grow. Right. Yeah. Now, obviously, I mean, there's like you know, no disrespect to B dope, but there's there's a pecking order at a certain point. Oh yeah. So there's four of us at the top, and everyone who joins, hey, they're a part of it. Yeah. But there's, there's not a, a founder, so to speak. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. just there's a pecking order how things work. Sure. And you have to pull people in. Yeah. That follow, I guess, the same guidelines that we will. Right. Like, you know, don't be racist. Don't be you know homophobic. Don't right. go out there and you know like you know. You know, use use other people's platforms for your own personal agenda. Yeah, don't right. like don't don't stain the brand. You know? yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm a, like this podcast. I'm very I'm very unfiltered. 
I'm very like in your face. I lean toward the right conservative wise, but the whole basis of my podcast, in case you didn't know, Joe, is you're allowed to have your own opinion. Yeah. As long as you don't base your opinion on race, religion, gender, and sexual preference, you're good to go. If you base any decision in your life based on race, religion, gender, or sexual preference, you're probably doing it wrong. You've got to look at the bigger picture. I'm not saying you, you, but I'm just yeah, saying yeah, yeah, as, yeah. As, a, as a person. So everyone should be equal in the eyes of race, religion, gender, oh, or saying. sexual gotcha, preference. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, that, and that's I was like, because as a pastor, I base a lot of religions on my own personal view of religion. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, yeah but well, you're not going to discriminate against somebody else. That's, that's the it. point. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. going to be like, oh, my God, I'm sitting here with a Jew. I know. Like, no, you I killed Jesus. Jesus. You killed him. If it weren't for Jesus, I'd be one of you. <laughs> but, and, but, and is is it, that okay for me to say? I don't know. No, no, that's, that, that's, that's, that's accurate. Jesus was a Jew. Right. But no, it's like... It, and just hypothetically, in this statement right now, I'm saying this as a hypothetical situation. If Sarge was to come up to come up to somebody and say, "I don't like gay people," and you know, it's not just me; it's everyone at Freaknet Studios. That's uh, a fucking yeah. problem, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's where things get changed. But first off, none of us feel that way, and none right. of us are going to do something like that. If you want to suck a cock and you have a cock, that is completely fine. Right. Love, love is. It's love. not something I could do. I, I yeah, yeah I, I, I'm, I'm probably lean, it, twenty I'm not, bu- twenty bucks is twenty bucks. I'm okay, not that right. poor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, and that's the biggest thing is like free because like free next series. I want it to grow. I want it to be more than what it is, and we could do that by pulling in other uh, creators. You know, it doesn't even have to be podcasts. It could be other YouTubers or you know people who go on Twitch, um, TikToks. Like, it's just. It's growing together and helping promote other people. It's it's a it's a community you want to grow, almost like a cult, like if you want to call it. <laughs> but it's just like if we could do it the right way and bring in the right people, that's not going to, you know, pull ball wash from you because right. they say something, right, you know, right. wrong in their way. Because right. then you have to make adjustments and to I, let people go would probably be a hard thing to do. But it's something we may eventually have to do if we start bringing in a community of people. It's kind of like right. modern family. Yes, like it's, it's, on, 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 on Twitter. Yeah. Oh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's almost kind of like that. Like, you know, it's like all these people are together. Like, you know, hey, share each other's stuff, you know, c- you know, comment. But sometimes people are just there for their own personal agenda. Yeah. Right? And that's and that's yeah. where we come into yeah. our problem. That's why at the end of this freaking show, or even at any point in this freaking show, or just freaking wrestling, we always mention FreakNet Studios. We right. always mention the Air Podcast. I try to do it. I think I've done it. I think I've... Uh... Talk, uh, yeah, I, you I'm talk t- about how we need to get off our lazy asses. I mean, yeah. come on. That, uh, that, <laughs> that's exactly the conversation we are having right now. Talking about, like, getting more people. We're doing the video now. In order to be part of FreakNet Studios, you must cut your wrist and bleed into the golden microphone. Right. <laughs> and then you can join our cult of sadness. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. We won't, we won't cut you. But that's It's a circle too. jerk, and we aim at right. the microphone. And the new person has to eat the cracker. And girls can only be part of FreakNet <laughs> Studios if they squirt towards the microphone. I'm just kidding. <laughs> too far. This is too much. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> Fucking hell. <hate>. Uh, <laughs> but no, and that's another cool thing too. Like you get the right people and everything. The YouTube videos, we get more people involved in it, so it's not the same faces every time. Also, right. also true. You, know? you guys hear about that YouTube kid that made like twenty eight million dollars last year reviewing toys? And yes, it's almost, I did hear. About oh, it makes that. me so sad like, about my it's life. Like Johnny's Toy Show or something. He's, like something. That. he's, he's, he's I feel he's just, sad for him. Oh God, he's yeah, his parents must oh, love him though. Yeah, review this toy. Well, see, I think like review this toy. I actually feel like his parents are doing him a disservice by helping yeah. him be that successful at such a young age. You're gonna make him socially awkward. Yeah. Those uh, kids grow up to be but like see, but here's alcohol the killers. Here's yeah. the thing though: if, when you find out, when you read the information about that kid, his parents still make him do everything school book related and everything. He has to do his homework. Before he makes his video, well so done, man. He still has a bedtime he has to reach. He still has, to, he still has yeah. like chores and stuff. It's just he finds time in between doing all this stuff to make the videos. Yeah, and I'm sure they kind of like you know blur that line a little bit. It's like, oh, well, I'll be with the homework real quick. Don't worry about taking yeah. the garbage out. When right. he goes yeah. to sleep, when he goes to sleep earlier, or he's doing his homework. The, his parents are counting his money, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> but, For themselves, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You <laughs> but, don't want him. You don't want him to be like Britney Spears' dad. Oh you yeah, know, just uh, take fleecing him, you know. Oh god. Yeah, but I mean, and that's and I think Freak Night Studios it, it's never, never going to be big as that toy show. I know for a fact it's not going to. Yeah, it's too adorable for us to fucking compete with. Oh yeah, yeah. but we could be something that could be a lot bigger, and it's just today's that starting point. Like yeah. this is day one of that. You gotta start yeah. somewhere. You gotta start somewhere. So we'll see how this uh, 
hot sauce review goes. How long have we been talking? Uh, 39 minutes. 39 minutes, delinquents. All right, let's talk about, uh, let's get into the politics thing, because I a lot of my people listen to me because uh, I like to chin check the left every now and then, so to President speak. President Booty Gig. President Booty Gig. Not going to happen. No. But that's the Indiana guy, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Joe, Come on, look what he did for Indiana. Yeah, Joe here is <laughs> Joe here is an ind- he's an independent thinker. He's just against liberals as I am, but also a different end of the the spectrum. I would like to hear from you as to why you have chosen or following who you feel should be the presidential nominee for the left. Yeah, so I'm I, I'm a huge fan of Sanders. I've I've liked him since 2016. Um, I uh, I love his consistency. I like his vision for America. I think we, we are the wealthiest country in the world. And the fact that, that there are people who are homeless, the peop- uh, children who are going hungry, uh, people are, are dying without health care for no fucking reason is absurd. Uh, we, we have more money than anybody else. We should be taking care of our poorest people. I think a society that doesn't take care of its poor is a society that is impoverished, regardless of how much money is in our bank account. Um, and I just, I, I respect that vision. I don't think he goes far enough in some ways. Um, there are some other ways I think he's good. Um, but I, I think he's a, he's a pretty, honestly, in on the global scale, I think he's a, a pretty moderate uh, person. I but think. you agree, would you agree that most, most uh, of these impoverished people live in um, districts that are democratically run? No. Such, such as San Francisco, Pelosi... Baltimore, Chicago. Look at the blue <clears throat> states, and then look at the impoverished in these regions. Norm- I think there are there are a lot of impoverished people in in these regions, and I think it's just there's uh, a lot of blue states uh, have big cities, and big cities are going to have a greater concentration of people who are poor because there are just more people in general. Houston is the third largest city in the America, and it's got like zero homeless people. I would like to see the data on that. Almost zero homeless people. That's interesting. There's like syringes and shit in the streets in San Francisco. Oh, for sure on that. And, that one but we, we, we agree that like the democratic way of thinking is more selfish than poor, for the people. Do you, would you agree on that one? Uh, I, I don't know if I'd phrase it that quite that way. But yeah, I think that's that's probably fair. I think there, there are a lot of, of well-meaning liberals. To be fair, Bernie Sanders does not think... In a democratic way, right? No, I don't. I don't I, think so. I, I, I don't think so. Well, I, I think that the issue is we're using that word, and the party is using that word, and they're using it wrong. You know what I mean? Yes. I, I think Sanders is more democratic than the Democratic Party because I think he actually cares what the people who are who are funding his campaign care about. Yes. You know, I I, I think that he, he is very consistent. He hasn't changed for right. forty years. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think it's I, people see that he is definitely a front runner. The DNC is terrified. Oh, they're so afraid of him. Um, they I, I think I think at the end of this election season, almost no matter what happens, what I expect to ha- to see happen in the next decade is the Republican Party is going to virtually disappear. And I think the Democratic Party is going to split into into two new parties. I think we're going to have the progressive Democrats, and I think we're going to have the conservative Democrats. Because I think there are a lot of people bolting from the Republican Party and bolting toward the Democratic Party. I and there are a lot of moderate mm-hmm. Democrats who would be much better served to be not in a progressive party. I, I think slightly differently as far as Democratic, Latinos, African Americans, people of color that have been like sent in these certain rural areas mm. and lied to for decades of, oh, Democrats are going to take care of you. You're going to get this, that, and the other thing. And now they're realizing that the betterment of <clears throat> like the economy is, is working and getting jobs and being proactive in your area. Like They're stuck in rural places or urban south side of Chicago, for instance, because everybody that could afford to leave those areas has left, gone to the suburbs, oh, for sure. done whatever. Yeah. But these other people have, they're like, they're working two jobs, they're making minimum wage, they're not doing well, they're stuck there, they can't go anywhere else, they can't go to the suburbs, so they're stuck in these horrible areas, and these Democratic aldermen have done absolutely fuck all to do anything to help them at all. Yeah. Like Chicago, when it comes to like gun laws, the most strict gun laws in the country, Chicago, number one. D.C., number 
two. Baltimore's up there. And, um, it's, Are Chicago's laws still that strict? I know they, they were previously, but they, they lost at the Supreme Court level uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, but it's still... I know, I, know they're, I know they're still pretty strict. I just don't know that they're the strictest in the nation any longer. They are strict, but lo- a lot of these weapons that are used on the streets are not legal firearms to have in the first place. No, no. And they're not purchased in Chicago. No, they're not. <laughs> they're, a lot of times they're bought from Indiana. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people know how to alter certain firing mechanisms to make them do what they want oh, yeah. to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. And as bad as that is. Like, I believe that you sh- you could have an AR-15 if you want to have an AR-15. But if you alter your firing mechanism, you're doing something criminally illegal, and you shouldn't be doing that at all. Should I, you? I, I don't think you, you should open carry in the city of Chicago, although it would make people a lot fucking safer, I think, if everybody could just have a fucking, <clears throat> you know, concealed carry. But if you have a concealed carry and you're publicly intoxicated at the same time, that's I just think that should be a bigger fucking thing. Like, in, in general, I think um, Buttigieg is out of his element. Klobuchar is not horrible, but she's going to get slobber knocked. She's the only one on the stage that has actually won Purple States. Um, Warren is a snake-in-the-grass liar who likes to only attack people in public forums. Bernie is standard. Like, he has not changed. He's like, this is what's going to happen. This is how I feel. I don't know how we're going to pay for it. Because this is this, this has been documented. No one knows how where this money is going to come from. Oh no! I've seen, have you seen, have you not seen his plan for paying for things? Which what things though? Uh, so uh, his his wealth tax on on people with uh, ten million dollars or more a year of income. Okay, uh, is great. He wants to uh, close a lot of the loopholes, uh, the tax loopholes that a lot of the the most wealthy in our society take advantage of, and he wants to increase like Amazon and like corporations. Yeah, and stuff yeah, like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, he wants to um, increase the uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Minimum wage. No, well, yeah, he wants to increase the minimum wage, which by definition would increase the amount of tax revenue because more people would be in a higher tax bracket. Yeah, but people still get taxed. Yeah. If people, if we, if people get, if if the minimum wage goes up to whatever fifteen dollars. Yeah, fifteen dollars an hour. Does the, do do normal do the people that make more than fifteen dollars an hour get a little bit of a raise also? I'm not I hope saying, so. I hope so. I genuinely hope so. I think it's 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 freaking crazy. If you took if you took the entire gross domestic income of our country and you divided it by the number of workers, everyone would be going home with a paycheck of $130,000 a year. It's a good thing our economy is good now then. I mean, it's great if you're at the top. (laughs) But there are a lot of people, like you said, who are working two and three jobs. And there are people that are on welfare and government subsidies that are using that as a way of living. I don't think there are as many people as as you think there are who are using that, though. Should they, Most should, people who are on welfare are only on welfare for about six months until they're back on their feet. That's the plan. Right, that's, that's the plan. That's the plan, but people have been utilizing government subsidies for a long time. Do you think these people should be, I don't know, drug tested if they're going to re- receive these sort I don't, of things? because the, the data doesn't bear out that they uh, are using that many drugs. You got, you, that's because you there's, no, there's no drugs. data. There, there, there's, there's tons of data. There's no law. Tennessee, there's... Tennessee has tried to pass this law. They passed it, and they ended up wasting money on drug tests because uh-huh. the, nobody got caught. Nobody, nobody who was on welfare, generally speaking, statistically speaking, nobody who was on welfare was using drugs when they did their drug tests, and so they ended up wasting like thirty million dollars. Are these on drug random? Tests. Are these random? Drug they were tests? random drug tests. Oh, they, they weren't. Ran, they were random drug tests of people who were using welfare. Mm. In Tennessee, they, similar things have happened in Kentucky, Alabama, because um, it's it's a very popular thing in red states to pass, and by and large, it has been a waste of money every time. Okay, what do you, how do you feel about like do you think if it goes past six months, they should be at least looked at or uh, counseled with to make sure they're progressing towards like. You know, I'm uh, not sure. The job market, trying to get a job. I understand if yeah, you're yeah, handicapped yeah. and you're down or you're right. down and you're out or something dies or <clears throat> whatever. I understand that. But within six months, you should be able to get back on your feet. Taking government subsidies from taxpayers and using that as a form of income from the rest of your, for the rest of your life is fucked up. I do, I, I do think it's fucked up. I, I am torn between... Uh, on the one hand, I, I understand it and I, I feel that if you, if you are able-bodied to, to do work, you should you should be seeking work. You know you sh- you should have an occupation. I think human beings need an occupation. Mm-hmm. We need meaning in our lives, and we get that meaning by the jobs that we do, the works that we do. Instead of instead of like just letting everybody have their own way, I think in order instead of doing the like the random drug test, we need to separate 
the wholesome from the people that are taking advantage of the system. And if we do that, I think that's what this dr I think what this what these random drug tests was planned for. And now they're finding out, like you said, that it is not working. That is right. not that just because we're giving them drug tests doesn't mean that they're not wholesome and they're not trying to be right. better people. But we need to find a better way besides the drug testing to find out who's manipulating the system and who's ta taking advantage of the system. Yeah, I think that's fair. And I, I think for me, what I see is the people who are who are receiving the most subsidies and the people who are taking the most advantage of the system are the people who are making 50, 60, 70 million dollars a year and don't need that. You know, they're, they're making more than I'll ever make in my entire life. They're making more than you'll ever make in your entire life. And they're they're never looked at by they're, they're almost never looked at by police they're almost never drug tested they're almost never because they don't have to be drug tested because they're the ones who are the bosses right you never drug test the bosses even though they're the ones who are receiving the most government subsidies if you don't give these corporations tax breaks who's to say that they're not going to jump ship and well, bring the work somewhere else fuck them <laughs> empower that's a lot of, that's a lot of american people, jobs though we're talking but about it. if you empower the people at the bottom who actually work the jobs uh -huh. they'll eventually fill the vacuum left by the people who weren't patriotic enough to stay and contribute to the society that gave them roads, that gave them bridges, that gave them police officers to protect their things, that gave them a military to protect the country and the interests that they have. I mean, you know... The only reason they have a job is because somebody, sometime, somewhere, invested their self, invested their money, built up capitalism for an industry, built it up. Maintained workers brought all that stuff up there. The people in the middle don't deserve the same <coughs> in regards to the people that started the whole business. I'm not saying they're not as important, yeah. but if I'm giving, I mean, if I'm giving everything I have and I have to take care of insurance and liability and I own this corporation and I'm responsible for all these workers, that's how it works. So, I mean, those people that are workers are doing it because they're being compensated Fairly. The people at the top, that's how capitalism works. They put in all the risk. So when that shit fails, they take all the blame. They take all the risk. They're the ones that get sued. But when corporations like Obama did this, and I think, um, I don't remember. Yeah, Obama did this, like th these bailout things. Mm -hmm. I hate bailouts. Oh, me too. <laughs> if, 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 you, if, if you end up, if you fail, if you build a business up and you fail, why should the United States citizens throw their tax money at you so you could start all over again. I, it drives me nuts. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Especially especially if you're somebody like a, like a J.P. Morgan Chase. Yes. Or a... Uh, Fannie uh, Mae. You know, right. Or, right. These or people, you, GMs, uh, what are they? General Mortars. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At, at a certain level, you're so... You know, when, when, when President Trump was, had to declare bankruptcy, he was never homeless. Right. He never had to worry about where his next meal was coming from, even though he was bankrupt. Yeah. You know? Um, and that's not... I'm, I just... He's the first example that popped into my mind. I'm not no, no, I trying to, to necessarily go after him. But when, when you, you know, because he, if he was not able to take care of the people under him based on the jobs that they were in, right? declaring bankruptcy protects them more than it would protect him because he's, he's automatically thrown under a bus. Right. And that's the risk that people that own businesses do. And lots of people are, you know, on Trump's ass about, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you uh, make America great when you were in business? Because he was dealing with the administrations and the economy-based foreign affairs as a businessman. If the, steel is China, uh, if the steel from China is cheaper, he's going to buy that instead of American. That, that's all I'm saying. He was, as a businessman, he did things differently because he was trying to make sure. money and save money. Sure. Now, I think he's trying to build America as in we could start outsourcing. We could, people could be buying American goods. Like, for instance, like we're China. Everybody goes on eBay and this is from China, this is from China, oh, this is from China. China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but now I think if, if it's American made, American work, American corporations, I understand the tax break thing. I don't think Amazon should be fucking like not taxed. Right. At all, it's insane to me. If you if you went to and and look, I guess I guess here's my question: How much more should a person who owns a company make than the person who's on the lowest end of the totem pole? I think because they're living comfortably, I don't think they should become uh, they should be getting any more of a raise than anybody in the working class. I think the working class, yeah. based on time served, time in, step raises, so to speak. I understand yeah. that. I understand yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I just you know I, I look at Jeff Bezos; he's making. Thousands of times more than the people who are actually busting their ass and dying on the floors of his warehouses, you know. But he put in <laughs> he put in the risk to build that up. Sure, people are dying 
Yeah, people. There, there have been people who, who uh, there, they, they have been trying to make the warehouses so efficient, and I'm, I'm trying to, to say that with the scare quotes in my voice. Right. Uh, they, they're trying to be so efficient that people barely have any break, uh, breaks. There was a guy. There's been multiple people who have had heart attacks on the floor of the warehouse, and they don't even call the ambulance for 20 minutes. That's insane. It's insane. That's, people, that's and, and other workers, because because they're so afraid of losing their jobs, they're walking over the bodies of these people to do their jobs because they're afraid that they're going to get fired. Also fucked if, up. If you, if you are working that hard, if you're so afraid of, of losing your job, that, that's coercion to me. You are coerced into working if you're, so, if you're on such a knife edge yeah. that you would walk over the corpse of your coworker to keep doing your job because yeah. you're afraid of losing it, that's, that's fucked up. That's that should a, not be happening in this country. And that a, should not be happening if the guy at the top has so much money that if he took 99% of it, he'd still be a billionaire. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. that, that, that's the that's the whole risk and reward thing. The whole sweatshop, death, child labor-esque sort of right. feel of it is completely fucking wrong. I believe these places should be taxed. Yeah. And, and as far as... As far as Healthcare goes. I don't believe that healthcare should be free, more as to make it more agreeable to be like allowed, like easy, easy, easier access. Such as um, th- these corporations, again, corporations that overprice certain products three hundred fucking percent. Right. So the common folk can't afford it. Right. I I, I under- yeah, like if yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is the corporations that upsell. Their products, right. that that's fucked. That, yeah, I, I also think it's tough too. You know, the 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 hospital, uh, and I, I love I love hospital. I, I I've worked in a hospital. My wife works for a hospital system. I've got I don't necessarily have anything against hospitals, but they are so in bed with the insurance companies, and they don't publish their prices. We you can't you can't walk into a hospital and say, hey, how much does it cost for me to get this thing here, mm-hmm. and then go to a different hospital and say, how much does it cost? Well, they're doing it for this much. You know, you can't compare prices at hospitals. It's impossible. So so capitalism, from that perspective, fails on a hospital level because hospitals don't publish their prices. You don't... And, they, and should. They, they should. They should. They absolutely I, Trump, should. Trump is trying to make that happen. Yeah, and you mix in the fact that, that insurance companies, they'll say, ah, oh, you know, why don't you pay us $100,000 for that? And then, you know, we'll... we'll, we'll We'll make that back the way that we make it, and and you'll make your cut. And the the consumer, eh, they're paying us for insurance, so you know they pay ninety bucks. We make a hundred thousand. You make fifty thousand. We're great. Mm. You know it's ridiculous. It's it's like it's like a form of insider trading. <laughs> You're right. If if a product costs fifteen dollars to make, I understand selling it for twenty five dollars to the consumer. Sure. sure, sure, sure. I do not agree with if it's fifteen dollars to make, it should be three hundred and fifty dollars for the fucking consumer. Right. I, I think that's fucking yeah, ridiculous. And I, and I totally understand. You know, doctors need to make enough money to justify the amount of schooling that they have. They and the reason to, the reason that we have you know, the best doctors in the world in America sure. is because we pay them. Right. Yeah. I mean, those uh, surgeons, doctors. They earn that. It's the corporations for the medicines and sure. the prescriptions that are fucking everybody up. I think. Right. No, I, I don't think you're wrong. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll definitely talk about this more in depth later. But uh, let's talk about it. What, what time? Well, where are we at now, Travis? Fifty-seven minutes. Fifty-seven minutes. Oh, oh but to bring it back. So yeah. Just speaking of the the original question, why do I support Sanders? Well, one of the reasons I support Sanders is I think he's trying to make things more equitable. Uh, Overall, and he may he may try to achieve it with policy. He'll probably fail with it with policy because I think you're right. I don't I don't know that we can get enough people in the House and Senate to be able to make things work that way. But I think that uh, a president, one of the things that they can do is they can inspire us to work toward a more equitable society. And I think that uh, his his record, his consistency, and his his passion and his persuasion uh, are going to move us toward a society that's better for everybody. Um, now, are, are some people at the top going to get hurt? Probably. But I think, you know, I'm willing, I'm willing to risk that for the people at the bottom who are already hurting now. The idea and the kumbaya of the whole thing, I think it's admirable, but there's no fucking chance because the Democrats are going to be like, fuck, Sanders is the guy. Right. So they're going to be like, all right, we have, to, we have to accept this and we have to take the label of socialism as democratic throughout our whole Democratic National Convention. Everybody who's a Democrat is now 
you know. Yeah, but we've been accused of that for years anyway. That, that's that's true. <laughs> they they tried to label LBJ a socialist, but I, uh, yeah, but look, like McGovern, so to speak, got oh, fucking yeah. blown the fuck out. And that's if, if Bernie becomes the if Bernie becomes the nominee, I think Trump is going to attack the fuck out of him, like tear him up. I think that's, he's been trying for four years though, and he's failed. Yeah, but the DNC. Fucked Bernie Sanders in 2016. Yeah, and Bernie Sanders oh, knew this, and he was like, "You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna support, <laughs> I'm gonna support Hillary Clinton anyway." And right. now, the DNC, he might win the nomination, but right. if he does not win the nomination, he's not gonna stand by his guard. He's not gonna stand by his morals and obligations and how he believes. He's automatically gonna jump on the train of whatever Democrat, and he said it. He's like, "I will respect as a super PAC any Democratic nominee because we need to get rid of Trump." I was right. like, "Why are the fuck? Why, why don't you just go? Why don't you just go independent? Why don't you stand for what you believe in and trust the people to get you where that needs to be? Why would you yeah. automatically be like, I I support Buttigieg, I support Biden, yeah. oh, even though Biden's There's not a, fucking going anywhere." Uh, I, I really like um, the Bloomberg reporting. is a bitch, by the oh, way. I totally fuck. am with you there. Uh, uh, Vermin Supreme twenty twenty. If Bloomberg gets the nomination, <laughs> but uh, 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 you know, great. I I, uh, I really love the reporting of a, a guy who he's a reporter. He used to work for for Cracked. Now he works for Bellingcat. Um, he does a podcast called Behind the Bastards, and mm-hmm. he, he with a couple of other people do a they're doing a podcast called Worst Year Ever, and they said something near the beginning of it where you know if you want to be the president, there's something fucking wrong with you. <laughs> yeah, you I don't know. know. I don't if know. If you I'm anybody wrong. anybody who wants to be a politician, there's there's something wrong with you, you know. And so I I agree with you. It sucks that Sanders would would let go of his his principles to support whatever nominee. But I really think that a big part of it is there's there's a huge number of I'd, I'd say the the people who are in the middle of the normal curve for de- who are voters who vote Democrat. Um, let's say the the section from like forty uh, percent to sixty percent. Um, they're they're the people who who want they just want to get rid of Trump. They don't care about because policy. Of, they because don't care of about character. Anything. Because Based of character. character. I, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. And and I also think that they don't understand. They, they're comfortable. They're educated. They're not worried about losing their house. They're not worried about losing their health insurance. They're not worried about where their next meal is going to come from. They don't give a fuck about their neighbor. Right. They don't care about anything except for how much how much equity their house is going to build. They just want to pay their student loans and get through life without worrying about anything. And I think that they look at Trump and they say, Trump's the problem. Because they they just watch MSNBC and CNN all day and 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 they don't ever think about anybody but themselves and their family members and they suck and I hate them. <laughs> yeah, I totally one hundred percent agree. Uh, and and Bernie to get the nomination, I think he has to appease those people, at least going into the convention. Is Trump an asshole? One hundred percent. Is yeah. he a good leader? I think one hundred percent he is. Is he unfiltered? Yes. What does that mean? He's not going to lie to you, and that is exactly what these fucking Democratic fucks are doing. Bernie is not. Bernie right. is yeah. Bernie is one hundred percent. He's yeah. like, this is how it is. This yeah. is what's going to be. Now, I will say do. there are already people uh, uh, organizing on the internet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> internet and, assassins. And, and, and sorry, I'm tough behind a keyboard. Sorry, Milwaukee, you don't deserve this. But uh, if if the DNC tries to steal the nomination from Bernie, Milwaukee's going to burn. Milwaukee, Milwaukee, where the DNC, uh, yeah. the, the convention's going, the primary convention's going to be. I, I, I feel people, bad for Bernie. I, I felt bad in 2016. Yeah, and Pe- I, I people are already now. planning the riots. That's what I'm trying to say. This doesn't, this doesn't fucking. <laughs> and I'm not saying it's a good thing. People. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm saying what what the DNC doesn't realize is that there are people who, if Sanders doesn't get the nomination, genuinely believe that their their lives are over. And not in like a like a fandom way. It's like a, they need health care or they're going to die. Yeah. They need a job or they're going to die. And, then, and the Democratic Party as a whole doesn't give a fuck about them. They just want their votes. And uh, what happens when, you know, heat meets a snowflake? Right. It melts and they'll melt. But yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah. Ber- Bernie, well, I, Bernie I, I is think, a, I think Bernie what is people don't realize is that is that Bernie is the compromise option for a, a, a significant portion of the left. Oh, I, I and and it, 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 it a lot of them are saying you know my my favorite campaign slogan I've seen it doesn't come from the Sanders campaign but it's my favorite one I've seen on Twitter, Bernie twenty twenty fuck around and find out yeah, <laughs> Trump twenty twenty at least I'm not a communist right, but I know I know oh, yeah. Bernie is not a communist but he's better than Bloomberg and Bloomberg is the guy that's trying to go in there by the campaign. Oh, completely agree. Hey, 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 uh, Bloomberg, did you did you show up to Iowa? No. Did you show up to New Hampshire? 
No. Have you been in any of the debates prior to this week? Absolutely no. fucking not. Okay? Yeah. You show up to one debate and you get blasted by a fucking <laughs> bitch snake in the grass in the first fucking oh, place. I love is the look on his face while it's happening. He's, like, he's like, no one has talked to me like this in 40 years. I, you should have signed a non-disclosure <laughs> agreement before talking to me like that. Right. <laughs> Oh my, Bloomberg just got fucking railed. He's oh been spending, God. he's probably, I will not be surprised if he shows up to he's, Milwaukee or Oklahoma and he's like, yeah. here's $500 million. He's already doing that. He's he's trying to buy the election. He's, it's he's so trying fucked. To spend, he's trying to spend $2 billion to save $3 billion. Yeah. You know who I like? Yang. Yang gang. He was going to give everybody $1,000 a month. At least he was kind of honest too, but Bloomberg is yeah. a joke. Warren is deceptive. I don't trust anything she says. Biden is a snake in the grass. Buttigieg <laughs> is... Biden is a dead man. Biden um, is a confused old man. He, Biden, he... How's he, he standing? He's like, the thing, we can have Bernie. Here's the thing the about Biden. Standing there. He could have retired as the most popular vice president in history. Yeah. He could have been remembered for being the lovable guy who ran through the White House halls with his gay pride flag on after the Obergefell uh, verdict. And and we all would have loved him and and thought, oh, what a great what a great vice president we had. And instead, he decided to run for president for the third time to lose for the third time. And you are the vice president to who? Barack Obama. And is he supporting you? No. Fuck no. What does that say about anything? Right. All right. Let's just we'll, we'll close yeah. it up. We'll close yeah. it off with that. But Bernie Sanders, one hundred percent, is honest. As fucked up as his policies are, in my eyes. He's not going to lie to you. He's going to be like, this is what's going to happen. This is how I believe it. The majority of people voted for me to be here. And may we all burn in hell. Pretty much. (laughs) (laughs) This is what's going on. (laughs) B-E-R-N. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Feel the burn. (laughs) Like an STD across your whole body. (laughs) All right. That is it, delinquents. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, Travis, got anything to say? You want to throw out Freaknet advice for everybody? Freaknet advice? Freaknet advice. What is Freaknet? Tell them one more time. Oh, a plug. It's not advice. Oh, plug it. Okay. Freak Night advice plug. Whatever, it's not advice. <laughs> it's a, it's I advise news. you to follow Freak Night <laughs> like, Studios. I like how you can be coherent for the last 25 minutes about yeah. politics, but when you're getting the idea of how to promote your own thing. <laughs> Join us for the new <laughs> monthly podcast, uh, Dear Travis. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Travis, speak to the people. <laughs> Guys, make sure you follow FreakNet Studios on Facebook and Instagram. Just search FreakNet Studios. It's the... Um, it's the umbrella concept uh, of the gray area of this freaking show and just freaking wrestling. We're going to come together and collaborate on some video content uh, that's going to be released here shortly. You guys got any dad jokes you want to spread, spread send to the people? I don't. I no, wish I, I did. I didn't prepare for that. All uh, right. I bought a pair of sneakers from a drug dealer. I don't know what she laced them with, but I've been tripping all day. <laughs> uh, that's good stuff. <laughs> all right, everybody. That's it for the podcast. I will see you guys next time. You guys got to join me on my bye. Ready? Bye. bye.